Hey guys, just before the video starts, a quick reminder that due to the changes to the YouTube Partnership Program, your subscriptions are going to be even more important than before. So if you appreciate or like the content, please subscribe to the channel. The faster we hit the 1000 subscribers, the faster I'll be able to deliver co continuous content to you guys. So now, let's move on to the video. Welcome back. Today, we'll be looking at the top three CPU coolers for cooling a Ryzen APU, so either the 2200G or the 2400G. What's different about these processors from the previous generation of Ryzen is that they generate way more heat than before. With the previous generation, anything under a 1600, you could pretty much overclock almost all the way with the stock coolers and not need to worry about it. So the only processors you would be buying coolers for is above the 1600 or the, or the processors that didn't come with any stock coolers like most of the X models. With the APUs, however, uh, the reason the game is changing and the list is going to vary a little bit from my previous suggestions for processors is that the APUs cost so little that you're not going to stick a $50 cooler on a $100 CPU. I mean, you can if you want to, but it sort of defeats the purpose of going for a budget build and saving on your processor if you're going to waste all that extra budget on a CPU cooler. So basically what the list is going to focus on today is really the best budget coolers you can get that is going to give you the cooling needed to basically overclock your processors. So if I were buying one of the APUs, I would be buying one of the three coolers I'm suggesting based on the deals I can find and based on where I plan to go with my build in the future. So without further ado, let's start the list with number three. So in third position, we have the Thermaltake Contact Silent 12. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, this was actually one of my top choices for overall coolers under $30. The reason why it's getting third position for the Ryzen APUs is because of the overall price of the cooler. It's not an expensive cooler by any means at $25. The only thing is that if you compare it to the price that you're paying for your 2200G, for example, it's almost 25% of the budget of the processor. So in my opinion, if I'm going to invest in a cooler, raising my whole processor budget by 25% is a pretty big deal. So the Contact Silent 12, the reason you would maybe choose this, pro, this cooler for your Ryzen APU over the other two on the list, I'll mention the reasons. It's that basically, if you know that your build will eventually go further, so either you're going to be throwing in a GPU and you're going to really pushing the processor maybe harder, or if you know that in the future, you might even be replacing your APU with a higher, you know, maybe second generation Ryzen processor or whatnot, then it could actually justify the investment in the Contact Silent 12. Because at that point, if you compare it to an overall build when you include a GPU and whatnot, the $25 doesn't represent such a huge spike in the price. Now, another reason you could also choose the Contact Silent 12 is because in all the options that we have today, if you include the LNC, which is their addition for lowering the fan speed and the fan noise, it's overall one of the most silent coolers you can get for under $30. It hits only 37 decibels, which was easily seven or eight decibels underneath the you know second best option, which is actually pretty significant in the noise department. So that could be another reason for selecting the Contact Silent 12, and it's also why it's on this list in position number three. So next, let's move on to number two. At number two, we have the Cooler Master Hyper T2. Now, the reason why the CPU cooler is actually hitting position number two on our list is because since I've reviewed it, it's had a significant price drop on average. Normally, the CPU cooler could be found around $20 to $25, but currently, you can regularly find it for around $15. And at $15, with the performance it offers, honestly, it is a good buy if you're going with a Ryzen APU. It really gives really good cooling. The only downside to this cooler, and the reason why it couldn't hit number one on our list, is that it's also one of the noisiest coolers I've tested. It easily hits above 50 decibels if you have to push the fan to 100%. And it's really disappointing because it's one of the smaller fans on of the coolers I've tested as well. So I was expecting the noise level to be a lot lower than it was. 
And the second problem with this cooler as well, or the second reason that it would maybe not be number one, is that out of the three coolers that we're looking at, even though, like I said previously, it's one of the smallest fans, it has one of the highest clearance heights. That's because of the design that they did for the heat pipes. There's actually quite a bit of spacing between the cooler and the uh, base plate, but that's to allow for the mounting mechanism and also the loop pipes at the top add an extra few millimeters. Meaning that accommodating this cooler is not gonna be the easiest, especially if we're looking at uh, mini ITX or micro ATX cases. You really have to check the clearance height on this cooler before. And by the way, if you want to check out more details about any of these coolers, I have individual reviews on all of them. So you'll be getting the exact clearance height and whatnot if you can't find it from your local manufacturers. So if you want to look up these things, check out the reviews on my channel and you'll get all the extra information you need. Now, as I said, at $15, you really can't go wrong with the Cooler Master Hyper T2. However, it is, in my opinion, dethroned by the number one, which we're gonna be moving on to in a couple of seconds. And now for number one, we have the Deep Cool Gamax 300. Now this cooler is a overall excellent performer. And for the price, which will surprise you probably, now the normal MSRP on this cooler is $20 placing it just slightly above the Hyper T2 on average. However, if you wait for deals, you can regularly find this cooler for as low as $10, like somewhere in between $10 and $15 on average. So, the re and the reason why it really takes position number one is that it's sort of combining the best elements of the previous coolers. It's not quite as quiet as the Contact Silent 12, However, it's at least a good 10 decibels under the, Hyper, the Cooler Master Hyper T2, putting it somewhere on, in my tests around 44 decibels. Once again, as I mentioned previously, if you want more in-depth reviews of any of these coolers, check them out on my channel, they are all there. At the same time, it has one of the lowest clearance heights in the coolers offered at this level and it offers a large 120 millimeter fan and the reason they can pack a 120 millimeter fan in such a small cooler is one because of the mounting mechanism and two because of the circular design in the fan itself and honestly for 10 to 15 dollars the performance you're get, gonna get out of this cooler is gonna easily keep your Ryzen APU under 60 degrees. By the way, any of the coolers so far on the list, if you have a even a decent to good airflow design in your case or setup, you should easily be able to keep your Ryzen APU fully overclocked, easily under 60 degrees, which for a Ryzen APU is a very safe temperature and you will not have to worry about any early degradation in my opinion. So. If I was choosing today a cooler for my Ryzen APU, my first choice would really be the Deep Cool. Unless I mentioned earlier, for my region, I wouldn't be able to find it. I would turn to the Hyper T2. And if I was looking for, uh, you know, eventually upgrading my bill and going with something bigger, well, then I could actually justify including the extra 10 bucks and going grabbing myself a Thermal State Contact 12. Now. There is one last cooler that we're gonna look at, which is a sort of honorable mention for someone looking at an extremely, you know, small build. So keep tuned for the next few seconds. We're gonna move on to our honorable mention, which is a cooler that I think a lot of people overlook. But if we're looking at a mini ITX and we really have to get the lowest clearance possible, could be an option to look at. So for the honorable mention, we have the Ice Edge Mini version 2.0. Now, the reason why this cooler was not able to get into the top three is simply because the performance on it is lower than the other ones we looked at. While the other ones will, as I said earlier, normally keep your CPU, you know, your APU somewhere around 60 degrees Celsius, um, this one will, unfortunately, you'll lose about, I would say, between four to five degrees of performance. So your APU will probably be more in the mid 60s, which is still technically a safe temperature on Ryzen. But if you live in a hot climate or if, for example, maybe your case or your setup doesn't have great airflow, you could sometimes run into some th thermal trouble with your system, which is why it couldn't make the top three. However, 
It is, in my opinion, the only decent option if you're looking at a very low clearance build. The closest option, the closest clearance on a cooler before this one was the Gamax 300 at about 135 millimeters high. Now the clearance on the Ice Edge Mini is only 112 millimeters, which is pretty darn low for a tower style cooler. And I'll be honest with you guys, none of the budget options on the really low profile coolers, which are generally downdraft coolers, none of them was re were really able to uh, do better than the stock Ryzen coolers without going into the like $50 models, sort of a, um, you know, some of the more expensive downdraft coolers that are available on the market. So basically, if you're looking at a mini ITX build or a micro ATX build, the other coolers aren't fitting. Uh, do look at the Ice Edge Mini, see if you can get the clearance for the 112 millimeters, because this will cool your system as long as you have decent airflow around it. And honestly, for the price, which is only about 12 bucks, it is a decent cooler to look at for those really you know low profile builds if you can actually fit this cooler in it. It's your probably, honestly, your best option for a Ryzen APU, unless if you don't wanna to have to pay at least $50 or more for a real high performing downdraft cooler. So I hope this list has helped you guys. Uh, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, any likes and subscribes really do help the channel a lot. And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.